because of the convex bony contour of the proximal phalanx. Dorsal lacerations are frequently associated with partial tendon injuries. Fractures of the proximal phalanx are commonly seen in association with these injuries, similar to tendon injuries in other locations. The ideal method of evaluating the extent of injury is by surgical exploration. Partial lacerations of greater than 50% and complete tendon lacerations are repaired with one or two modified Kessler 4-0 core braided polyester sutures and a 5-0 cross stitch on the dorsal side of the tendon. The core suture should be placed into the relatively thicker area of the lateral bands to obtain maximal purchase. Early motion protocols to prevent adhesions to the proximal phalanx involve the use of a dynamic extension splint to allow pip joint flexion. The postoperative splint includes a dorsal outrigger with elastic straps to provide passive pip joint extension. The degree to which the pip joint can be safely flexed is determined during surgery by observing repair site tension. Accelerated rehabilitation protocols generally begin within the first week of repair. If treated with immobilization, the PIP and MP joints are maintained in extension for four weeks, followed by range of motion exercises. Zone 4 in the thumb lies over the metacarpal. In this zone, the tendons are typically wide and round enough to perform a standard core type repair with a 3-0 or 4-0 suture, followed by a 5-0 cross stitch. Authors preferred method of zone 4 repairs. Assess the tension on the repair site with isolated MP and PIP joint flexion to determine the safe zone of motion postoperatively in compliant patients. I begin hand therapy and dynamic extension splinting as noted previously. In less compliant patients, I splint the wrist in 20 degrees of extension, splint the MP joints in full extension, and mold a Palmer splint to allow pip joint flexion to a degree that does not permit visual tension or gapping at the repair site. I have the patient perform passive extension of the pip joint, limiting flexion with the splint for four weeks, followed by active range of motion exercises.